Katie Turr gets exactly the sentiment of the American people. And she, just like uh, Jen Psaki did yesterday, she personalized it like how too few journalists, too few hosts are able to do it using their own kids. Her babysitter, feel, uh, who's going to be with her kid at home when both her and her husband, she and her husband, are out doing their jobs, knowing that she wants to walk the kids in the park, but she's scared. She wants to go on the subway, but she's scared. She wants to go to the supermarket. That is what terrorism does. That's what domestic terrorism does. And this is nothing more than Republican Party sanctioned terrorism on the American people with the policies they effect with guns. It is a terrorist act on the part of the Republican Party. I want you to listen to this, and then we'll take it on the other side. Gun Violence Archive has logged 201 mass shootings across the country so far this year. That is 201 mass shootings in 128 days. So what are we doing about it? Joining me now is Connecticut Senator Chris Murphy. Senator, thanks for being here. I'll tell you about the conversation I had as I was leaving my house this morning with my um, with our, my kid's um, child caregiver, my, our babysitter for our house. And she started crying because she said she's scared to go to a playground. There was a shooting at the playground around the corner from my house recently. She says she's scared to walk down the street. She says she's scared to get in the subway. She says she's scared to go to the supermarket. And we are here in New York City where comparatively gun violence is much less than in some other places around the country, red states in particular, where it's much higher, according to the statistics, not anyone's opinion. What do we say to people who feel like who feel like their own rights to feel safe in their communities, to live their lives are being infringed upon by people who are demanding unfettered access to deadly, violent weapons like AR-15s or AR-15 style rifles? Well, uh, Katie, um, good to be with you. I mean, I think there's a couple things to say at the outset. First, of course, that fear is totally logical when you are watching this cascade of senseless random gun violence. Everybody feels like they might be next. But it is also important to right size that fear. You know, I, as we've talked about, I have two kids in the public school system, and I, I want them to understand that while gun violence is a real problem in this country, it is still very, very very unlikely uh, that anyone is going to die in a mass shooting. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't take steps to stop this from happening, but it doesn't mean that we all have to live every single minute of every single day in fear and that we have to become one big armed camp to try to prevent that gun violence from happening in our own lives. So I think we have to just settle everybody down for a minute and, and make sure that there's an ability, especially for our kids, to get on with their lives. That being said, obviously, this is happening here at a level that it happens nowhere else in the world. I just left a meeting with a mother who lost her daughter in the Nashville church school shooting, uh, and it is just heartbreaking um, how families who never, ever thought this epidemic would come close to them are now having to deal with it. Um, so what do we do? Uh, we have consensus around parts of the agenda when it comes to what needs to change. 90% of Americans believe in universal background checks. 80% uh, of Americans think we should have red flag laws available to us in every state. And so I know it sounds a little tiring, but we just have to keep at the work of changing out members of Congress and members of state legislatures who don't believe in the things that 90% of Americans believe in and replacing them with people who are going to do the right thing. That's politics. That's democracy. It takes a while, but that's the work that we still have to uh, get done. I hear you. Um, but the randomness of this is what scares people. It's unpredictable. It doesn't feel like you have any control over it. And it feels like it can happen every, anywhere, a supermarket, a school, a mall. I understand the putting into perspective, as we all try to do every day, put everything into perspective and, and live your life, obviously. But it, it, it feels, and you're saying there's incremental movement, it can feel to people that nothing is being done and it's not being taken seriously and that it doesn't matter 
that the biggest killer of kids in this country is guns. Like, that's just not a big deal. That's what it seems like to a lot of voters out there. I don't know how much more explicit you could be. I understand Senator Murphy uh, trying to say, yes, it only occurs very few times. He's right. It's in as much as there are nine people who got killed in, in Allen, Texas, uh, five people who got killed in Cleveland, Texas, and however many else got killed in Tennessee and Florida and California. The one thing is true. It is minute compared to the population of the United States, but it is huge compared to what happens in the rest of the world. It is huge towards the psyche of you not knowing whether you will be that exception, that victim, because there are thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of AR-15s out there, all a potential deadly attack on you. Remember that. So while it's minute, the randomness of this, you know, they talk about it's not the same as in the inner city because in the inner city, it's, it's where most of the killing occurs, which is true. But, you know, you just said it in the inner city, right? We need to mitigate what's going on in the inner city. Yes, but there is a consistency of where the crime is occurring. We need to handle that. But the randomness, the randomness of what occurs with the mass killers. They don't know where they're going to act. They don't know where their next act is going to be. There's a difference. There's a difference. And Republicans may, Republican politicians may play like they don't understand it, but they do. But you know what? It's about the mighty dollar and the game of numbers. It is time for us to use the game of numbers against those who al allow the unmitigated murder of our Americans. They don't only do it with guns. They do it with health care and they do it with so much more. It's the party of death. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.